Rob? Uh, good evening, Rob Milano. Um, I have uh, five kids in the Canby school system, um, two at Karis, one at Baker Prairie, and two at Canby High School. And uh, we're currently all in the uh, COLA program. And I've been on the budget committee for the last uh, four years, I believe. Keep coming back for more. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Okay, um, Riley? Riley Henderson. Um, my daughter is at Tross and uh, live right next door to Paris. But um, yeah, new. So thank you for letting me be here. Awesome. Thank you for volunteering. Um, uh, Felipe. Uh, Felipe I have two kids in the Kimmy School District, uh, one in uh, Baker Prairie and one at Knight Elementary School. Uh, I have been living in the Kimmy School District uh, less than two years. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jesse. Hi there, Jesse Halton. I have two children in the Cami School District, both go to Trost. Uh, first time being on a budget committee or anything like this, so I'm very excited to see what it's like. Uh, thank you for um, yeah. We'll move on to Denise. All right. And Trip, I suppose you can present too. I just know that Denise has the PowerPoint. All right, so can everyone see my screen now? If you have a second screen, okay. Um, well, welcome. And as Angie said, we're very grateful to have all of you join our budget committee this year. Um, I know that Kamala had sent you out the PowerPoint ahead of time. Um, I'm just projecting it here on the screen and we'll just go through that. And feel free if you have any questions along the way, um, just stop us and we can um, answer those. You can use the raise your hand feature or just unmute yourself and ask that question. Um, we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. So let me get up here, hang on. Oops, okay. So we are just gonna go over what the role is for you on the budget committee. Talk a little bit about our budget development process give you kind of a historical view of our budget. Um, then we're gonna look at the primary resources. That's the revenues that we get in for our district. Then looking at our expenditures. Um, and at the very end, I'm gonna turn it over to Trip, our superintendent who will kind of give you a budget outlook um, for the coming um, fiscal year, which starts on July 1st. So as Angie mentioned, um, we um, have committee members that are made up of our board of directors and then an equal number of um, board appointed voters in the district. And this year we're happy to state that we have 14 people total. So glad that we had all of you volunteer. We had more volunteers than we had spots for. So that's always good to have. I think there's a few board members that aren't on here tonight. And then I think there's just one additional budget committee member I haven't seen yet. I don't know if he's shown up on the other side yet or not, but um, again, happy to have you all, all join us. And everyone um, is appointed for three-year terms unless you're filling in for a vacancy. So we always have new people coming on and others going off. So um, that just allows us for staggered replacements on the committee. And I think you all have been given a copy of the calendar that just kind of shows you our meetings that we currently have scheduled ahead of us to complete this process. So as far as your role, um, you are the ones that review, you provide input um, and you approve the budget that will be presented to you um, by our superintendent in May. Um, you also approve the resources, which I mentioned before, the revenues and also the requirements, which are the expenditures for all of the funds that we have in our district. Um, you also approve the total taxes and the tax rate that we will impose for the budget that's being proposed. And then once you make that um, 
you will be the ones that approve that. And then it goes to just the board at the June board meeting where they actually adopt the budget, um, make appropriations and also impose and categorize all the taxes that we send to the county um, in July. So for the budget process, um, we look at board and district priorities. Um, Tripp and I and our whole admin team will look at um, input from all of our buildings as far as needs that they have um, in the budget. The board does have a 5% ending fund balance um, that we um, hope to strive for every year. And we also, when we're building our budget, we make sure we build it based on our funds that are available to us. We also utilize a staffing model when we are planning for staffing at our schools. So right now our K2 staffing is a one to 24 ratio. Um, three to six is one to 26. Middle school, we have one to 28. And at the high school, it's one to 32. Um, keep in mind, that's when we're in a regular classroom, um, not in a distance learning model because those numbers are much lower right now um, just because of the model that we're instructing our kiddos in. So just a few terms to go over with you. Um, again, our budget is our plan and we have to balance out our revenues um, with our expenditures. We have to follow all the processes that are outlined in our local budget law that's um, given to us by the, the state of Oregon. Um, we also um, get money from the state in a biennium. So the current year that we're in, the 2021 school year is for the 1921 biennium. So what they are doing down in Salem right now is looking to come to the amount that they're gonna fund schools for for the 21-23 biennium. So that's what um, we're waiting to see what that magic number is going to be. And then for our state school fund, that's the dollars that are educated to our K-12 um, education at the state level. We also have what's called average, average daily membership. And that's the total days that a student attends school um, divided by the total days that school was in session. And right now we are receiving $8,724 if you are a kid who came to school every day throughout the school year. Um, so it amounts to about $50.72 a day. So if we have a student that doesn't come to school that day, that's, you know, we lose 50, over $50 a day for that kid not, not showing up to school. So that's why it's always really important to encourage our kids to come to school because it means money back to the district. And um, we also have English language learners in our district. Those are students whose native language is not English. Um, sometimes you might hear that also called ESL. We also have students who are on individual education programs, um, our SPED students. And another term is just funds. So we budget in different funds, um, depending on the financial activity that's associated with that. And also we have our requirements. And these are all of our expenditures. Um, we do have contingencies in our budget and we also have unappropriated any fund balances. So that's money reserved for future um, payments or expenses that we have. Um, we also have appropriations, which um, the committee adopts for our legal spending authority. So we have to stay within those appropriations. Um, otherwise, our auditors would write us up for that, or we would also come back to the board if we need to change what was adopted um, for the budget for that year. We also have an ending fund balance. As I mentioned before, um, we are looking at having at least a 5% reserve um, for our school at the end of the fiscal year. We also have what's called a roll-up cost. So from year to year, there's um, cost of living increases that are built into our um, contracts. So a teacher might be eligible to step on the salary schedule. So that's gonna have a cost associated with it. And then oftentimes our salary schedules have increases um, 
So there's always the roll-up costs that we have to consider when we are developing our budget. So this kind of just gives you a snapshot of where we've um, seen monies coming to us from the state uh, over the last five biennium. So we're currently operating in a $9 billion budget. And for Canby over the two years, it's estimated that that will result in about $68.3 million that comes into our district. And again, I had mentioned that we have the average daily membership for our students. We do get additional funding from the state if a student is identified as ESL. Um, they're worth an additional half a weight. Um, if you have a pregnant or parenting teen that you serve, they get an additional weight. For students on IEPs, they can be worth up to an additional weight. We also um, get additional monies for students that are in poverty and also any student that's identified as um, foster or neglected and delinquent. And what the state does is they will take um, the average daily membership of your current year or looking at your prior year's um, enrollment and they will pay you based on the higher of those two years. So currently we are looking at in our distance learning model, um, we have 5,123.74 average daily membership. Um, last year was 5,496.9. So we are currently being paid off the 1920 numbers. Um, we have experienced students that have left the district this year that have gone to charter schools that are outside of our district or are homeschooled. So that's why one of the reasons why our enrollment numbers are down. Um, in addition, we haven't seen as many kindergarten students into our schools as we normally have in the past. I think we've had parents that have chose to keep them out of school. So we might have a much higher number next year. We'll just have to wait and see. And we also um, have our state school fund um, adjusted based on the teacher experience ratio, our teacher experience that we have in the district. And we're currently, that's a plus 2.17. So on average, statewide average, we have teachers that average two years higher than the rest of the state. We also get reimbursed for transportation expenses. So we get 70% back of all of our reimbursable cost. Um, that's added to our um, total formula revenue. And we also, the state school fund revenue also is offset by any property taxes or local revenues that come into the school district. So this kind of, I know it's a little bit small. Um, this just shows you the state school fund grant. Um, this was our last estimate that we had as of December 16th. So you can see up here, this $16 million is, oops, sorry, went, went too far. That is the monies that we're currently um, anticipating to get in for property taxes for this year. We also get monies in from our common school fund. So our total local revenues are about $16.5 million. And again, um, we have a teacher average experience of 14.27 where the state is 12.1. So that's where we're getting additional um, monies added to our formula based on that. We are looking at almost um, $3.8 million in transportation expenses for this year. So then this is where we get the $2.6 million um, from the state to offset those costs. And then it just goes through and um, um, gives you all the different formulas associated with that. Um, as you can see right here, this 34.13 million is the amount that we anticipate getting this year from the state for our state school fund. And then this general purpose grant per extended ADMW, this 8724 is the amount that we're currently getting per student if they attend every day of the school year. So this just gives you a snapshot of what the current um, status is of our state school fund. They will probably give us another estimate, I believe they said by the end of this month. Um, and then we're also gonna start seeing estimates for 
the 21-22 school year soon. It's going to be based on the governor's budget, and then that will change up until a time when we bring a final um, budget to you to, um, to look at. And then this just gives us our extended ADMW. It's just a snapshot of mm. our enrollment. So this first line is ADMR is actual um, counts of students that come to the school. So as you can see, we are much higher in 1920 than we are in 2021. Um, 532 students in our ESL programs, one student in parent and pregnant teens. Um, this is our students on IEPs. We have students in poverty and then the foster um, and ne neglected students. So as you can see, um, the number for last year is higher than this year. So that's what we're getting paid off of. So now I'm just going to kind of go over the funds that we have in the district. Um, we currently, at, it's close to a diff 100 different funds that we manage in our um, district. The main operating fund that we use is our general fund. That's where the majority of our revenues come into from state school fund and from taxes. We also have our special projects fund. Um, this is where we house our federal grants, our state grants, um, intermediate and local grants. Uh, it also includes our student body funds that we have at each of our schools. We have a construction cluster fund that's um, where we um, keep our money for our high school construction program. We also have a food service fund. Um, so this is where we record all the revenues and expenses for our food service program. We have a debt service fund. This is repayment in any of our long-term debt. Um, be it bonds for schools, and also we have PERS debt that we're paying. We have our capital projects fund. Um, this is any um, capital construction that's financed by previously sold properties. Um, this is also where we will we have any of our bond expenditures that will that are getting paid from our bond that was passed in May. We also have an internal service fund. Um, so this is when we provide goods and services to outside parties, um, when we rent facilities, um, utilizing copy machines, and sometimes um, outside parties or agencies will pay us back. If we send a staff member to a training, um, they'll reimburse us for any sub or staff costs for that. Then we also have our trust funds. Um, that we're holding those assets in a trustee capacity. And this is mainly um, our high school scholarships. Uh, we have donors that have given monies to um, award scholarships on an annual basis. So this is the fund where we keep all of those. So this graph here just gives you a snapshot of where um, yeah. our current budget this year is $168 million. Um, as you can see, the biggest portion of that, um, the 48% is in our capital projects. And that's because we had added um, um, $75 million worth of the bond in that account. And before that wasn't always the case. Then you can see that the general um, fund is the next one at 33% um, at $55.5 million. So that kind of just gives you an overview of the different amounts in those funds that we have. Then just looking at our general fund, it um, is broken out. The majority of it comes from our state school fund at 63%. And then again, property taxes is 16%. Um, so overall, we're looking at a $55.5 million budget in the general fund. And then I just wanted to break out so you can see how those monies are distributed um, for our instruction. That is to pay for our teachers and any of our sports staff that are actually in the classrooms. That amounts to 56% of our general fund budget. Then the next biggest one is our support service budget, which is 37%. Um, this is any of the services to help sustain and support our education of our kids. It includes our buses, um, any of your school staff, 
um, in the office, the secretaries, the principals, it's any of the staff associated with running our facilities. It's the central office staff at the district office. Um, also technology staff that we have in our buildings. Um, and again, the one thing that we have down here is the 5% reserve that we set aside um, in our expenditures. Then the next part is just breaking that down a little bit further. Um, of those monies, 78% of it goes to staff, staff salaries and benefits. Um, so as you can see, the majority of the budget's already allocated to those um, FTE or those staff that we already have employed in the district. And then the next piece of it um, is the purchase services at 14%. And again, that would include transportation, um, utilities, any printing costs that we have. So you can see our supply budget's um, small. It's only at 2%. Um, and again, we have that 5% reserve. And this last year, after the Student Success Act passed, um, they developed a student investment in account, which um, was, you know, it's a, it was a great um, boost to the district to help us address some of those needs in our classrooms. Um, it was intended to help us reduce class size, um, expand instructional time, develop a well-rounded education, and also look at the health and safety of our students. So for the current year, we received an additional $1.2 million. Um, in that account, we are still waiting to see what the 21-22 amount is going to be. And actually that $1.2 million was about a third of what we were anticipating getting initially. Um, we were supposed to get over $3.7 million. So we're, we're hopeful that we will get more um, um, monies in for this year. Um, this next bullet, I actually learned something new after this was sent out. The state will allow us to carry over these funds through September 30th if we request an extension. Otherwise, they don't carry over like some of our other grants do. Um, so we will certainly look to see of the 1.2 if there's any monies that we need to use for summer school or other opportunities. Um, but we will definitely make sure that we don't leave any monies on the table um, to help our kids out. Another part of the Student Success Act was monies for what they called Measure 98, and that was the ballot measure or high school success. Um, this is the first year we received full funding for that, and our allocation again was almost the same amount as the Student Investment Act. It was a $1.2 million, and we do anticipate to receive full funding for that next year. And then also the other part of the Student Success Act was that they distributed additional money for preschool programs. So um, we coordinate our Head Start program with the Clackamas ESD. And so we were able to add an additional um, program, new classroom this year. Um, so that was good that we were able to, to serve some additional kids. So now I'm going to turn it over to Tripp. Thanks, Denise. Um, well, thank you all for joining tonight. I, I know I recognize obviously some of our past committee members. So thanks again for being a part of it and welcome to all the new um, members tonight. Um, Denise does a great job. I, I should uh, mention that last board meeting, we had um, an update on our audit. And, you know, once again, uh, our, our audit was really flawless. You know, we do a great job uh, making sure that we're really transparent with our budget and we make sure that um, things are done in a really organized and thoughtful fashion. And that's due to um, Denise's leadership. So I, I really appreciate the work that she does. As you can see on this um, slide, um, there are a number of budget considerations that, that we're gonna have to take into account for this year. You know, again, every student equals a certain amount of money that we get through the state school fund. So like other districts in our area, uh, many families have chosen to have their children go into charter school or homeschool. And so our, um, our enrollment dropped. And again, funding is based on enrollment. And so it's really gonna be difficult for us 
to determine going into next year whether or not all of the students that left will return. And we're hopeful they will, but it, again, it's really, um, we're speculating at this point. Um, you know, the state school fund, again, right now the current allegation is nine billion. Um, the governor's came out not too long ago in January and, and announced that she was gonna um, propose a 9.1 billion. That's usually historically, uh, you know, th that, that'll be negotiated and uh, hopefully we'll see something higher than that, but that's where it's starting right now. Our PERS rates, again, retirement rates will decrease in the 21-23 biennium. So if a person is in tier one or tier two, um, that will de decrease by 3.42%. And then the OPSERP will decrease by 1% uh, and a little more than 1%. And Denise can certainly go into the, the details around that, um, but you know the district does have an obligation um, with regards to um, PERS rates and, and costs for retirement. We have a roll-up cost and contract reopener. So by that, when you see CEA, that's the Canby Education Association. So, you know, I think it was what, 78% of our, of that pie that, that you saw on the slide is personnel costs. And so we have two associations that we work with. One is the Canby Ed Association and the other one is OSCA, which is the service or organization that uh, association rather that um, takes care of the union for our classified staff. So we just finished up a contract with them. Um, all of our contracts have roll up costs each year. We do have a reopener this year, which means in sometime soon, I'm sure we will be contacted by CEA and we will begin dates for set dates rather for um, negotiating a new contract. Um, the Student, Student Success Act allocation, um, again, Denise just mentioned SIA and the High School Success Act, which is Measure 98. We are really fortunate to have this money intact. Um, you know, when I mentioned before that, you know, we have students that have left and we not, we're not quite sure. These are dollars that are dedicated um, based on committee work that was done last year where we were required to have a process where um, different people could come to the table and have a voice in how we would prioritize the use of those dollars. And so um, that's already, there's a plan that was already submitted um, to the board with regards to those monies. And, you know, we weren't able to use uh, all of those monies the way we, ha we had intended this year. And so uh, we will be looking at how we can make sure that we spend those dollars wisely moving forward. And then lastly, the impacts of the, of the pandemic. Um, so, you know, what will staffing look like? Um, it could go either way. Like for example, if we lose, a considerable number of students due to the fact that they're not gonna return, that could impact staffing. We may have to adjust our staffing model based on that. Um, materials, cleaning protocols, you know, we're, we are, I think, fortunate right now that we, uh, our facilities manager, Larry Burridge, did a lot of um, purchasing early on when the, when the pandemic started. And so I feel like we're in, in a good place, our technology um, director Brett Aikens did the same thing with technology. Over the years, we've really worked hard to bring our class sizes down to whether I think they're as good as anywhere in the state. And so I think we're poised to be able to hopefully handle any kind of significant budget issues coming forward, but um, it's still concerning. And the other one I'll, I'll, I'll end off with is this. I, we're not sure how kids are gonna respond when they come back to school. We have kids that have been out of school for nearly a year. And so we may have some staffing considerations there with some additional mentors and counseling and support services that, that we will deem necessary to bring our kids back to where, you know, they actually feel like they are, are in a good place to learn. And so we're, we are really monitoring that closely as we move forward.
So we will just open it up. I don't know if anyone has any questions, um, anything that we can clarify for you at all. Do you, do you mind um, Xing out of your screen yeah. so we can uh, see? So this is pretty informal. If you um, would like to speak, just you know, unmute yourself, wave your hand. Um, uh, I actually had a question. Great. Um, with all of the changes that you're going to have to implement, um, bringing all the, the kids back to school with all of the COVID precautions, do you guys anticipate any additional funding coming in to help with that? Or is yeah. that just a cost that you guys are going to have to eat somehow? No, that's a, that's a great question, Amy. And, and we are really fortunate. We just found out that we are going to receive about 2.278 million um, from the federal government as a part of the assistance program, which, you know, every state is really scrambling to try and figure out, you know, how to handle these kinds of unexpected costs. And so Denise is really in the process now of trying to figure out, um, you know, what are, what are going to be the processes and, you know, the bureaucracy that's going to be required to have access to the dollars. But um, we know what our amount um, it's roughly to, again, point two hundred thousand dollars. That's a great question. And earlier we did because it's it's called the ESSER or CARES funds. We did receive, I think, our first allocation was about five hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So this is round two of the stimulus dollars. Um, we also spent um, a lot of that money on. Um, hotspots and getting those devices out to families so that they could access the learning model at home. Um, we did purchase one-on-one -on -one iPads. We didn't have those at the elementary school level, but that was part of our bond promise. And so we actually utilized bond dollars to pay for those where a lot of other districts around the area had to tap into these types of funds or their general fund to pay for those. So we we're fortunate to have that already included in the bond that we could pay for those expenses. I got a question. If those bond dollars were used for, for this, for the additional expenses, what did we, what, what was the bond for originally? What did we steal? What did we take from to compensate for that? That actually was in the bond part we oh. had about $10 million set aside for technology. And part of that was to get one-on-one -on -one devices for students. So we were just able to, to purchase that right away as it was part of the bond. Yeah. Okay. So I, if kids equal money and dollar signs at this point, what I hear lots of talk about spending money, but where are we? At what point is the budget committee going to talk about saving money or compensating for where you guys are going to be short for the following year? Well, that, uh, that's a good question, Raleigh. That'll be when, you know, I do the budget presentation, right, when we put the budget together. And so part of it is trying to, again, ascertain um, how many students are going to be coming into the district. And based on that, what will be our staffing need? And so it could be where we're overstaffed, right? If we currently have staffing for um, 5,400 students and we're gonna be at, let's say it goes down truly to 5,100 students. We'd have to make some some adjustments with staffing where we'd have to make cuts. And it's my question, my, I'm sorry, but my question trip is, is that like a May thing or a June thing or when does this committee talk about that or forecast it, for that part of it? Normally it would be in, in early May, I'm gonna say. Okay. okay. Yeah. And part right. of What's been difficult over the years <clears throat> has just been waiting for the governor's budget um, to come out. And sometimes we don't, <clears throat> excuse me, really know exactly what we're gonna get until I think a couple of years, it was June. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll give you a ballpark in terms of what we're looking at in terms of spending. Yeah, good question. I had just a really quick question about the ADM and how that's calculated and how partial days for students figure into that. Okay, go ahead. So, so what happens if you have a student that's not in attendance for a full day, um, we report 
all stu- to the state um, on a you know on a quarterly basis the kids that are enrolled in your school and then it shows how many days they could have been in session and how many days they weren't in session and then you would only get a, that whatever that percentage is for that student so um, the school secretaries that's why they work you know they do all that and then our data analysts will upload that to the state um, so that's how it's it's calculated it's calculated by student on a daily basis so right i was just curious like if a student misses a partial day does that show up does that factor into the adm like they miss that whole day um i'll have to look at the exact rules i think it's a certain percentage of the day but i could find that out and let you guys know that nice. good question so we may have a uh, <clears throat> difficult budget or excess we don't know yet but for us to understand better what our head count is or so on do we have like a average of teacher and assistant teacher per head count uh like a ratio that we can um just to get ahead of it so we can compare to other districts and then uh, we can see we have um less and we can bridge that gap or mm -hmm. more those things that <clears throat> have helped me in the past to understand where we stand do we have that uh, data yeah, we have that from from this year's not a, a good one to look at just because of all the movements of teachers with staff and the staffing movements, but we did have one. So we would sit and look to say like at a specific school, if all the K through, you know, sixth graders move up, then you know what there might be a bubble class or something. So then we have made adjustments knowing that, you know, at this school, you might have had a sixth grade class that was quite large. However, your kindergarten class is down by like 25 kids. So we have made adjustments along the way that for that school, you're getting one less teacher the following year. Um, as Tripp said, this next year is gonna be hard just because we don't know how many kids are coming back. Um, a lot of my colleagues around the state have taken, you know, you go with your lowest and what you're, and we're anticipating at the highest for this year and you kind of do that middle ground in between to be somewhat cautious, um, we'll watch because in December we had to submit what we thought was gonna be our estimated enrollment for this year. Um, and everyone across the state was required to do the same. So at the beginning of March is when they will put out their first estimate. So that will give us a better idea of what we're gonna get per student based on the projections across the state. Um, so we do watch that very carefully. This year it's just gonna be a lot more difficult not knowing which of those kids are going to come back. So we'll be conservative for sure. Do we have actuals, uh, what we have today, like the ratio, like teachers or assistant teachers per um, population for the district? We could give that to you, but like I said, it's, it's a lot. We have, it's a lot lower than normal because we have students that are in the um, the COLA model, the online learning, so they have a lot more students. And then our teachers that are doing the right. can be at home learning have, you know, 12 to 15 kids. So um, it's a little bit skewed right now. Right, right. Um, yeah. We could use uh, last year's data. Yeah. 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 I could look at to understand yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just going to, I was going to say, I don't, did we, um, for new members, have we given them last year's budget? Um, I don't think we sent that, but it's accessible on the website if anyone wants that. But I'd be happy to give you one of those. Um, I can look at our last spreadsheet so you can kind of see how how we allocated out staffing based on our enrollment or even what we are estimating for this year um, prior to COVID happening. So would that be helpful, Philippe, to give you that? Yeah. Yeah, we'll send that out to everyone. Thank you. The other thing I want to talk about is capital projects. Are those established and running or are they new capital projects upcoming um it's basically all of our bond projects that we have we have going right now and we've been um, um full bore on that that piece of it and doing as many projects as we can this following summer and then a lot more planning for future ones so um i think this summer probably close to four or five million dollars worth of projects will start happening um and then a lot more in in future years so yeah Okay. Thank you. Yep. And there'll actually be a, a, a bond oversight committee that'll be put together for that. 
any other questions for this part? And I'll tell you, Denise is um, always willing to, you know, track down answers to questions like this. So if you think of things after meetings over, um, feel free to, to be in touch. Um, she is a wealth of information. <laughs> any other questions? Okay, well, um, so we'll look at the meeting dates. Um, we've got them set for May 3rd, May 24th, and um, June 17th. And um, we'll, as there's information available, um, and as the budget is developed, then you'll see more from our team. And again, thank you for agreeing to participate and for being here tonight. Hey Angie, will will we be sorry to interrupt, but will we are you guys gonna email us agendas for these for these dates for, for May 3rd and June 17th, et cetera, for, for that type yep. of stuff? Yep, okay. we will. We um we have to okay. post them anyway, like we do public notice as well. So yeah, uh, yeah, as we get as we get closer, we will for sure. Okay. Okay. And Riley, we always try and prior to that May 3rd meeting when Trip will present the budget, we try and get that out to you at least a week ahead of time so you have a chance to review. The budget document um, so and if you have any questions between you know when we get it to you or you know if you have them at the meeting then that that gives you a little time to review it in in more detail um, instead of just handing it to you that night so and I guess I'm just a little bit confused because I see I see lots of numbers in the budget for you know staffing and you know whether it be payroll or and things like that and then capital capital projects but operational costs and day-to-day -day costs are, are those in the budget as well or am I missing they are that? yes what do, what do those fall under in category so there most of those are under the the purchase services the 390 the 300 accounts okay. um I don't remember which slide that was on but it's the 300 objects so that's where we pay for like our buses um you know the transportation costs our utilities and such and small amount for supplies so perfect perfect yeah. thank you thank you yeah All right, well, thanks again for being here. Um, we will adjourn this meeting. We're gonna use the same um, setup for our regular board meeting, which will start in about 10 minutes. So um, I'll adjourn this meeting and we'll be back uh, shortly to begin the regular board meeting. Thanks again. We'll uh, Thank you. see y'all soon. Thanks, thanks a lot. <clears throat>